In this video, we are going to cover how to choose a bug bounty program for you to attack. One of the first things you have to do is figure out a target that you want to start doing your recon on. And sometimes people can become paralyzed by analyzing all the different targets and trying to figure out which one they want to attack first. And so I want to try and help you figure out how to narrow down your options and then specifically choose one and then start your recon process with. So before we jump into this too far, I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of encouragement. And I'm not really a Star Wars fan, but I came across this quote a really long time ago and I found it to be really helpful. And it says, you want to know the difference between the master and the beginner? The master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried. And I think this is really helpful when trying to figure out how these top hackers are finding so many bugs and so many other people are struggling. It is because they have dedicated a, a lot of of time to specific platforms and to learning this craft and so we just have to keep moving forward every day and you'll be getting better when life gets you down you know what you gotta do i don't want to know what you gotta do just keep swimming just keep swimming just keep swimming 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 what do we do we swim so i decided to add just keep moving forward to a t-shirt recently because it really does show the perseverance that you have to have in the field of cybersecurity. So let's go ahead and take a look at Hacker One and narrow down some potential targets. And I'm gonna show you my process for doing this. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So here we are on Hacker One, and one of the first things I like to do is come in to the hackers, and then we need to go to the directory so that we can start looking for different programs. And now I like to click launch date, and I like to sort by the date. I wanna go from the newest first. I accidentally clicked it one too many times, and I actually believe you had to be logged out of HackerOne to have this feature work. So if you're logged in, go ahead and log out. And then you can look through here. And then once you have them all sorted out, one of my favorite things to do is open them up and look at the scope. I like to see how big the scope is and make sure that there is a really large scope because one of my personal biggest struggles is I will open up a program and I'll get started. And then in 20 minutes, I find myself out of scope and this can be a problem. So I really like to have large scopes. It also means that you have a lot larger attack surface and there's gonna be a lot more diversity and where different bug bounty hunters have been looking and testing. And so you're more likely to find a bug. So let's go ahead and scroll through some of these and let's look at some of the scopes. So maybe we can look at this link tree. I have actually never looked at this, but you can scroll down and look to see how large their scope is. And it seems like they have a pretty large scope and then you need to make sure you stay away from these specific ones. And so make sure when you are searching for a target that it has a large scope. And one of the second things you should search for is something that you're really familiar with. So I've noticed that there can be a lot of like currency trading programs on here and I'm not familiar with a lot of the online currency trading programs so that's something that I'm going to just avoid but maybe you're into shopping and you're like I want to check out Fossil I want to see what kind of scope they have and you can come in here and read about it maybe you're really into gaming and I'm pretty sure here's GameStop there are quite a few game style programs on here and you can go ahead and attack those. I'm pretty sure PlayStation is on here, GameStop is on here. And if you're familiar with those websites already, those are gonna be something you're gonna to want to attack because you're gonna already know how the web app functions and what should be happening when you click on different links or log in. And so pick a program that you personally are familiar with and are already interested in. And a sub point to this is pick a program that you're really interested in because you are gonna be interested in clicking through the website, seeing what's happening, what products there are, and maybe you'll be interested in looking at the projects and it's gonna help you figure out how the website functions just because you're gonna be a normal user and there's gonna be things on the website that you wanna look at and click through and check out the functionality, but you're also really interested in what they have to sell. This is gonna really help in keeping your interest. And so pick a program that you're familiar with or one that offers some kind of service that you're really interested in or products that they're selling that you would be a potential buyer of. Now, the reason I told you to sort the programs by date is because the newer the program, the less likely they are going to have already been tested by a bunch of different penetration testers or bug bounty hunters. And this is really gonna help you land a vulnerability before anyone else because the web application just hasn't been picked over as much as the older programs. And a, another tip to this and is really popular and probably really common knowledge is to choose a program that is unpaid. So you can come down to one of these unpaid programs and hack on one of those because the top hackers are gonna be going after the programs that offer rewards and financial gain because they're doing this for a living. 
And if you're just trying to get that first bug, then you can go for the unpaid programs and then also the newest unpaid program. And the last tip is kind of an OSINT tip. And I think this is really gonna help you in your ability to find bugs based on what the developers are posting. So go on to all the social medias and follow the developers that work for a specific company. So if I was going to come over here to MongoDB, I'd wanna find the developers that work for MongoDB on Twitter, find their GitHub pages, follow them on any social media that I can because developers will often brag about the different software that they're using and they're implementing into different projects. And then lastly, they're gonna be pushing their new code to GitHub. And if you are following them on GitHub, you can go and check out the code that they have published before anyone else and see if you can find any vulnerabilities within there or maybe they have pushed some sensitive information to github that they otherwise shouldn't have and so following the developers is going to be really helpful and and one last thing the developers will often do is when they launch a new subdomain or a new area of the web application that wasn't previously launched, they'll often post about it and they'll tell you what is going on on that specific page. And following the developers is one of my last tips in trying to choose a program. If there are a lot of developers that you have the opportunity to follow on a specific program, this is going to help you be one of the first ones to find new pages as well as code that is being pushed to GitHub. Thanks for watching.